Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome guys. Today we're going to talk about the compassionate imams, the issue of the compassionate imams. What is it all, all about? Okay, so I've seen a lot of popular Muslim YouTubers. I'm not against them. See, when I make a video, I'm not against them. I'm just showing you like, uh, I see a lot of people get sucked into it. I almost got sucked into it too. This idea of bashing compassionate imams or bashing or red pill, blue pill, all this kind of stuff. This guy is soft, he's weak, he's not masculine, and all this kind of stuff. I always felt like it was weird. And I didn't know how to address it. But I remember some time ago, I wanted to make a video about Mufti Menk. And this is a, a long time ago. I don't think he, all this stuff even started yet. But anyway, the issue of Mufti Menk was that some people were criticizing Mufti Menk that he's too soft, and the way he speaks, he doesn't tell people the truth. And he has, he has many followers and these people, they don't know what is truth and stuff. And I always felt like, no, something is wrong here. He's not, some people need Mufti Mek. Some people need that. And sometimes I needed to listen to someone that is compassionate, someone that is softer than listening to the other person that will tell you as it is. It's not like that person is not telling you the truth, but sometimes you don't need to listen to that. <laughs> you want someone that will get you off, that will help you. That will stretch out the hand for you. Whereas sometimes you need someone that will slap you. You see? So it depends on the person. It depends on the situation sometimes. That will decide what is, what is necessary. No one can fix it. So you have Sheikh uh, Muhammad Hablos, for instance. He tells, he's very passionate and he tells you how it is. Straight up. But then you have Mufti Men. You need to listen to that sometimes. But you need to balance it out. Sometimes some people. And you have to understand people are different. There's some people that might need that, and there's some people that might need multi men. So that's what I thought at that time. But there's something else. There's a principle that I'm going to share with you guys that will help you uh, see through most of all this kind of uh, rhetoric that is going on. Masculinity, feminism, and all these things. And anything, democracy, whatever. Whatever people are calling to as if it's some kind of thing that we need to attain. And once we attain it, everything will be fine. This is how you see through it. This concept is called the bottom of realization. What does that mean? The bottom of realization. Have you ever seen somebody that wanted success so bad and then he goes out to achieve this success? Maybe to live in the city or something. And after he achieves it, he realizes that it's all empty. And now he wants to go back to the village. He wants to go back to nature. How many people have you seen rich people that don't like wearing big clothes? They want to go back to even nature, they want to be normal people again. So there's a trend in this life that you, you, you tend to have hope in something that you've not realized yet. But once you realize it, you always, most of the time, feel bored of it. Like, now what? Like, it's like a puzzle. Once you complete the puzzle, it's boring. There's nothing to do anymore. Then you start pulling it down again. And that seems to be the historical cycle. It moves like that. So now, people are, they have been ramming in feminism for so long and social justice warrior and all this stuff and they thought they were winning they were winning yeah it will get to a point like it is right now people will be like you know what we are done with this social justice nonsense and feminism we want masculine masculinity back okay they want they will start saying we want masculinity back and then masculinity also quote unquote we think they are winning when people start becoming much more masculine and everything until they realize that masculinity becomes so pro uh, prominent in the society to such a level that people will be like, we are done with this one too. That's what mostly happens, okay? So the moment you realize masculinity, the what you want, there are no more cap capacity maps. Now you have people that are hardcore. Now <laughs> people are going to be like, this is too harsh. We want to, let's, let's be moderate. Let's be moderate. And then they will start going back again down. So that's what tends to happen. So is the... So the time that will decide what is the right thing to do, there's no answer. There's no right answer that should you be a compassionate imam or not. You cannot answer this. People have different personalities. Some people want to listen to, like I said, uh, Mohamed Hobolos, and some people want to listen to Mufti Menk. You cannot force somebody to be listening to Mohamed Hobolos. Or I'm just showing you, like, if you if you think about what I'm saying. So <clears throat> when someone calls another person compassionate imam, what are they supposed to Some people's personalities, they cannot be masculine and talk like you. They cannot do that. They are soft people. 
and they will talk and that's how they talk to people and now the concept of hikmah like what's the right thing to do some people say let's strike a balance sometimes you cannot find the balance balance between uh being harsh and being too nice how do you strike a balance so this way i will bring out uh, the concept of hikmah wisdom now what is, what, is, what is wisdom imagine you have uh, somebody that you think is uh, an innovator and is like 80 years old innovator okay let's say innovator 80 years old and then he's sitting down in the mosque and now you you know he's an innovator and you want to go and correct him so you go to this man and you say you are wrong you should change your ways don't ever do this again this is absolutely impermissible why are you doing this allah will judge you you can go to jahannam if you do that well, that's one way of calling telling people what they're doing is wrong yeah that's one way but there's another way of going to him and kneeling beside him and telling him sheikh i i know you have some views like this and i'm just advising i think you're wrong and let me explain i'm sorry if i come out uh, you know how you can talk like that that's another way which way is the best way maybe <laughs> The situation will, det will determine what's going to happen. If it is going to be harsh, maybe sometimes you have to be harsh. Maybe sometimes you, you don't need to be harsh. So you're going to weigh out the situation and you make a judgment. And when you make that judgment, someone can see you being compassionate to that guy and be like, this guy is compassionate. You should, you have a, or I found this, a new term, <laughs> or something like this. You are too nice. How can you be nice to somebody that's an innovator? Or, if you are too harsh, some people will say, this guy is too harsh, man. Speak to him nicely. You are the one, you have destroyed the, the dawah. Which way is the right way? So, if you jump on the bandwagon on, in, at any point in time of this, this thing, you will soon realize that, bro, it's not actually the right thing. Because if any other way, it could have been any other way. If you are too nice, some people will say you are too nice. If you are too harsh, some people will say you are too harsh. If you think you are moderate, some people will put it on the extreme. Okay, this guy is being moderate and they are like, this is compassionate, man. Or this guy is too is being moderate, like, this is too extreme. <laughs> what is right to do? If you understand this, you will just step back from all of this and just try to be a normal person. In another video, I'll talk about blue pill and red pill and all these things. And how some, I've seen one guy, one of my friends, he got sucked into this and he has not left it for months. He's, I'll just look at him every day, posting stuff about masculinity. As if anyone is threatening him. No one is threatening him. He just he just got on the bandwagon and he cannot get off. I'll share some of my thoughts on this issue. It will be similar to exactly what I just said here. That sometimes there's no right way. Once you choose one way, if you choose it and you go long enough in it and you realize what you want, you become bored of it. And then you want something else. That's what usually happens with this. It's, it's a trend. Okay? To put it simply, it's a trend. Now it's trendy to be masculine. Before it was trendy to be softer and feminine. Now it's trendy to be masculine. It shouldn't be that kind of uh, two way, uh, is it that this way or that way? It should be both. You will find some people, even within the Sahabas, let's be frank, some Sahabas were much more tough than other Sahabas. Take Umar, uh, Umar bin Khattab and uh, Uthman bin Affan. You know, <laughs> Umar uh, Radialan. Is, is tough, it's very tough and <laughs> very very straightforward. And uh, Uthman bin Affan Rujalan is not like that, okay? It doesn't mean they don't say the truth, but the way they will say it will be not be the same, and everybody knows that. So you have to allow that. If someone is being compassionate, it doesn't mean they are evil or they are compromising. It just means they are not like you. If you, you want to be uh, harsh and listen, go and do your own. Let's see if people will accept that hour from you. You see, like, some people will not listen to you. They will listen to that other guy. So anyway, this is my thoughts on this whole issue of uh, compassionate man. Let me see what you think in the comment section. See you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.